I'm not pulling on my driveway. We all know what that means. It's time for another Drive to Work Coronavirus Edition. Okay, so today is going to be the 10th and final in my Two Color Philosophy series. So I finally got up to green blue. So, okay. So uh, there's a certain number of questions I always ask. So let's start with talking about what the colors are. So first let me explain green and blue individually, and then we'll talk about how they get together. Okay, we'll start with green. So green is the color that believes in growth through acceptance. Green believes that the world is perfect the way it is. There's no need to change it. In fact, the key is understanding why it is the way it is and accepting it. That once you realize that you're a part of this amazing world that you live in, once that you understand the, the, the web of life that you are a part of, once you understand your role in the world, you have to accept that and live it. And that's how you, that to green, that is how you're happy. Okay, so blue, blue says that you are a tabla rasa, that you are a blank slate, that um, you can be anything that you set out to be, that you, that the, the goal of life, uh, it, it wants uh, perfection through knowledge, that what it wants is it wants to be the best version of itself that it can be. And through education, through experience, through tools, through technology, that it gets the things it needs so that it can become the best version of itself. Okay, so right away, um, we can see the conflict in here. I mean, these are enemy colors, so let's start by talking about the inherent conflict between them. So the conflict between them is the nature versus nurture conflict, right? Right? Green believes that you are born the way you are. You, your genes to dictate who you are. You are born with all the qualities that will make you you, you are born with. The things that you will excel at, you are born with. Well, blue, blue believes, you know, in, 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 in uh, not in nature, but in nurture, that you can become anything, that you are, you are clay to be formed, that you, that you are not born with any, you know, you, you get to be who you are because you choose to be that way, because you train, because you study, because you learn, you know, you become what, you know, your strengths are not, you're not born with strengths. You are, you, you learn the strengths. You, you, you learn, you, you grow into your strengths uh, and become, and become part of, of I never really grow in, I guess that's green. You, through execution and doing things, you, you build yourself up to, to gain your strengths. Okay, so that's in the inherent. So right off the bat, is there, there's inherent conflict. One side is like you were born a certain way, and the other side is you can become whatever you want. Okay, so how do those two colors get together? Like, what are the two, what do the two colors have in common? So one of the things I like to look at when you talk about why they have in common is first let's look at their shared ally. So the shared ally is white, right? So white is all about the good of the group and the idea of trying to. Um, trying to do what's best for the, the, the group at large. And so when blue and green get together, the, um, whenever enemy colors get together, they tend to bond through, through their shared ally, basically. And white very much has a sense of the group. So when blue and green get together, there very much is a sense of we want to look at the world around us and understand how we can impact that world. Now, the interesting thing is, and this is where blue and green, blue and green are the two colors that care most about um, information. Now, blue is looking for, uh, blue cares more about the future. It wants to gather information to change and to adapt. Where green cares about the past. Green very much cares about what happened, who his ancestors were. You know, green wants to understand and study what was because it wants to replicate that. So it's interesting that both of them seek information, but for different reasons, right? Blue seeks it to improve itself. Green seeks it to better understand who it is, right? But they are the two colors that most value understanding things. Now, once again, blue is more about knowledge and green is more about wisdom, so how it uses that knowledge is very different. How it uses the information is very different. Um, that blue is a little bit more proactive in wanting to sort of find the thing it needs, where green is more about understanding and finding, you know, green is trying to seek out known information and blue is trying to find unknown information, essentially. Um, but the two colors both have this sense of, like, once again, blue looks forward, green looks back, but they're both looking somewhere. They're both trying to understand something. 
You know, blue believes if it can understand the future, it can guide what it's doing. Where green thinks if it can understand the past, it'll guide what it's doing, right? Each one of them is looking in a different direction. But the key to any sort of pair is looking at where they overlap and understanding that. Okay, so blue wants to learn everything it can about everything, essentially. Green wants to understand everything that is. Now, blue cares more about potential than green does, and green cares more about sort of what was than blue does, but both of them care about that. You know, green green does believe in evolution. Green does believe things slowly change. So it's not that green is afraid of looking in the future. And blue wants as much knowledge as possible, and sometimes that knowledge comes from the past. So it's not like blue's unwilling to look at the past. Um, so when blue and green get together, they really have this idea of wanting to both understand the world around them, but impact it. And so... Um, the thing I like to say about blue and green getting together, uh, we've used this for the Simic specifically, is improving upon nature. The idea being that blue is about perfection, green is about growth. Okay, well, what if you mix those together? What if the idea is, what if I use my knowledge and my tools to better understand nature and then do things to improve upon it? Uh, and so the idea is it's taking green's obsession with nature and taking blue's desire to sort of optimize and putting it together. Um, so what happens when blue and green get together, you sort of have, okay, well, I want to study things and learn about things. And I want to learn how a duck can swim and how, uh, an octopus can grab things and how uh, a cow makes milk. And like, I want to understand all the things, but then the blue part of it says, okay, can we make use of that somewhere else? This this thing that makes a duck float, what if a gorilla could float? You know, it, it really starts extrapolating and trying to understand. So where blue and green really sort of get a lot of passion is this idea, um, blue and green really get into the scientists of things, really get into the study of things, right? They really are fascinating by how things tick. And then can they use that information in a way that could further things? Um, and the interesting thing is, blue by its very nature and isolation from green very much wants to sort of make something that is new. And green in its isolation from blue really wants to wallow in what is. So the combination of them is this idea of really studying what is, but in a means to, to change it in a way that improves upon what it is. Um, which is a very interesting thing, because in some ways, one of the things that happens when enemies get together is the combinedness of them does something that the individuals never do. And in some ways, um, it plays into some neat sort of um, conflict there. Like, the nature the nature nurture conflict is very kind of interesting in, when you look at blue-green in that it... Um, it definitely believes that there's a combination of nature and nurture, right? The blue-green is like, well, some amount of it is nature, let's understand nature. Some about it is nurture, let's understand nurture. And so the interesting thing when blue and green get together is because they're sort of accepting each other a little bit, you get a more whole package. You get something that's a little more cohesive. Like if you look at things and say all that ever matters is nature, then you're you're ignoring anything that nurture could be. And if you're looking at something and saying all of it is nurture, you're ignoring the nature. So it's fun in fun ways when blue and green get together, they start having this desire to be a little more exacting and understanding the, the bigger picture. Okay, so how do the colors differ in a way that you know what's their internal conflict? Well, their internal conflict obviously is this nature nurture conflict. Um, but also, one of the things that's really interesting is um, another fun thing to look at conflicts is obviously enemies have built-in conflicts, but there's a secret second conflict I'll talk about, which is um, when you look at the shared uh, ally of the other enemy. Okay, so blue's enemy other than white, because white, white is the shared ally between blue and green. Blue's other enemy is red. Green's other enemy is black. Okay, well, black and red, why, wh what is, why do they get together? So they care very much about um, the importance of individualism, right? Uh, black very much wants what it wants, very selfish, trying to get power, uh, power through um, ambition. Uh, red, by the way, is trying to follow its heart. It's, you know, freedom through action. It, it wants to do what it wants to do. But both black and red are very self-centric. You know, black is trying to get power for itself, 
Red is trying to listen to its heart and do what it wants. It's acting on its emotions. Um, so the interesting thing is that um, one of the things that sort of, uh, it's not the internal conflict, I guess it's the external conflict, but blue and green, when it gets together, looks at its sort of shared enemy's ally, which is the individualism, and blue and green really isn't at all about an individualism. In some ways, it's it's very interested, not, like, when it studies things, it's not because it wants to help any one thing. In fact, it's not even trying to help individual things. It's trying to understand the bigger picture because blue and green wants to change the world, wants to improve the world. And so they're very anti-individualistic. They're very not, that their share, their conflict in some ways is with the ally of the things against them. Um, and so blue green very much has this desire. Blue green is in it because what it is doing is good for, for the world at large. Um, like the green part of it thinks that it will, maybe it'll do things that help solidify and understand the world around it. And the blue part goes, oh, well, we can make changes that adapt things. And they sort of come together to make this neat sort of, um, like I said, the, the scientist is really how I think of blue-green. The, 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 the desire to look around and understand and examine things. And um, I think there are, there are a lot of different facets. I mean, uh, um, I mean, science science is a big and broad category, right? Um so, I mean, it, it is, I, I can see blue-green. A lot of times we, we tend to, the cynic tends to uh, get bogged down in biology, uh, in understanding animal systems and adapting them. And um, But that is more the cynic take on things. I think there's a lot of different ways to do blue-green. And that the, the interesting thing about blue-green is it loves systems. It loves natural systems and wanting to understand its system. Um and the simic is it's, the simic is doing that. It's just looking more at biology. Um, I can imagine. I mean, pick any science, any kind of science. I believe blue green could go at and could really take and dissect and look at it. Um, okay, so uh, what does the guild despise? What negatively drives the guild? Okay, that's me getting into the red and black of the idea of um, it's very anti-individualism. It very much is focused on. Uh, systems and improving upon systems. Blue green loves its systems and loves understanding its systems. Um, like one of the things that's very interesting to me is um, one of the things that's also fun to do when you look like, for example, um, when you do enemies, you also want to find the overlap between the enemies. Like even mechanically, for example, you'll notice that blue and green share hexproof. Uh, they share flash. Um, they are the two colors, for example, that have the Morrow ability that gets bigger based on your hand size. Um, and in fact, I think they're the two colors that do the most scaling in general. Um, that it's funny that um, green believes in a very natural growth, and I, I want to sort of become the thing I'm going to be. And blue believes in a very, on some level, unnatural growth that I I want outside systems to change what I am. I want to better myself and make myself more. Um, but you can see in both of them that there is this very sense of progress to them and advancement to them. And so blue and green, blue and green very much are about wanting to um, grow in advance, that they don't want to sit still. Um, and that very much that when blue and green get together, they're trying to understand um, kind of what role they can have. Like the thing that's funny is, Green is all about understanding what role it plays, and blue is all about finding its own path, right? Um, so when you get those together, there's this very, like, one of the things about blue-green that's very interesting is there definitely is this, there's this sense of blue-green of wanting to um, explore, right? Uh, like, it's very funny. Like, green, like, exploration, because it's all about going out and seeing the world. I want to see the world for what it is. And blue likes to explore because blue is like, I want to learn everything I have to learn. But when you get them together, there's this very strong sense of exploration. There's this very strong sense of um, wanting to understand. Like, it's funny, white is their shared ally and white is king of structure. But it's funny that blue and green, when they get together, very much want to understand structure. Not build structures as much as understand structure. Um, I mean... Blue and white, when they get together, are a little more about building structure. But blue and green are more about understanding the structure that is there. And 
with Blue's influence, clearly there's some desire to improve upon it, but but it is very much in wanting to look out. Um, so it's funny, when I get color pairs together, um, I always like to look at sort of like, what kind of jobs do those color pairs do? Um, so first and foremost, scientists, I, I, I already said that. Um, but there also is a sense of explorer. There's a, a sense of... Um, on some level, like, it's funny. When red and blue get together, there's a lot of creativity there and there's a lot of expression there because it's using sort of blue's desire to search with red's passions. Um, but when you get to green, instead of it being passion, it's more about understanding um, the, the, the components that make up the world. Like, one of the things that blue-green, I think, is very fascinated by is... Um, like, blue-green really believes that there's untapped understanding and that if you can understand better, that that, that is the impact, you know, that, uh, that blue-green is trying to figure out how to advance things. And in order to advance things, it feels like it has to dig deep. So it's a very introspective color. Um, it really wants to understand why things tick. Like, it's funny, for example, when blue gets together with red, um, it it's kind of doing wild creative things. It's designing things for the sake of designing them. It's just sort of finding out, like, in some level, blue and red are trying to find what doesn't exist, and blue and green are trying to find what does exist. Um, and that that's an interesting thing, in that blue, when going with its enemies, blue clearly has its passion for learning, um, but red and green sort of go in different directions. Um, that red is very fascinated by making the thing that doesn't exist yet, where green is very fascinated by understanding the thing that does exist. Uh, and so, anyway, that's kind of cool. Um, okay, so what is the color's greatest strength and biggest weakness? Um, I think blue and green's greatest strength is its love for understanding and exploration. That blue-green is the color combination that is going to find out the information. Uh, of all the color combinations, it's the color combination that will, will it has the most passion, not passion, passion is red, but has the most um, desire, I guess, to learn. You know, that it really wants to, it, or I guess learn is not even the right way. It wants to understand. Um, blue and green are very much about understanding systems and understanding why things are the way they are. And then using that information to figure out whether or not there's a means to improve upon it. Um, so blue and green, its greatest strength is its, um, eagerness and willingness to explore and its willingness to sort of, like, it's not trying to, blue and green is trying to understand what is. It is, I mean, it, it later will then adapt it, but it is first trying to understand what is. And it has this, you know, it is not trying to change things to match its perception. It's trying to truly understand what it is. There are other color combinations that, um, don't quite accept reality or, or want to shape reality in the means that how they want it. Um, you know, when you, you, like, for example, oftentimes when black gets involved in things, black is like, I'm going to make it the way I want it to be. I don't care how it is. I'm going to make it so it serves me. Where blue and green are very fascinated by understanding the, the nature of what is there and, and what's going on. Um, its greatest weakness is that, um, Blue and green, and once again, it's, it's, if you go to its main conflict, blue and green just don't really appreciate individualism. They don't appreciate, um, they're so fascinated in the structure. Like it, it's the person that spends so much time sort of studying, um, studying others that it's not self-reflexive. It doesn't look in on itself. Blue green does not take good care of itself. Um, and at some level, kind of like the stereotypical, uh, you know, a scientist that's working so hard that he forgets to eat. Uh, that is kind of the nature of blue-green. Blue-green is so exacting in what it wants that it's it's not worried. And also, um, it cares big picture, but in some ways it doesn't care small picture. Um, if it discovers something, let's say it, it it's studying something and learns about it, it doesn't so care much about the thing it's studying. It doesn't have any, like, blue-green... Um, there's not a lot of emotional attachment. Um, blue, in, in general, is the least emotionally attached color. Um, but green definitely has this quality to it. Um, 
I mean, it has its instinctual side, but that's more when it shares with red. When green gets together with blue, it sort of pulls out its... Um, like, green also has this very cold quality to it, right? Green can, like, that's the way it is. And I, like, green green, green is not particularly empathetic. Like, if, you know, you watch uh, a predator eat a prey, green's like, well, that's just the way it is. That's what, that's what happens. That's what preys get eaten by predators. And there, um, green... Well, green does have a spiritual side when it gets with white. I mean, there is some desire of... But even then, green cares more about the, the, the larger whole than it does itself. Um, and blue is not particularly emotional. So the biggest negative of blue-green is that it, it can't connect on the individual. It can't connect that... It can see problems on a larger scope, but it doesn't appreciate that one person is having problems or one thing is in pain. That blue-green really is about trying to, in some level, fix the larger problems that it doesn't understand the smaller problems. It doesn't really, it doesn't really get that there is... Because in some level, it's looking for such the bigger issue, it, 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 it just can't focus on the fact that there are smaller issues that matter. Um, and as such, blue-green is not particularly... You know, if you want to have a pal help you. If, if, if you're not feeling well and you want to talk to somebody, blue, green, blue, like, like for example, it's the kind of thing where you start talking with them and they get very caught up, not on your individual issues, but on larger meta issues that come up. Um, and they, the other thing is blue, green can get very distracted. Um, blue, green is so focused on sort of its, its exploration that it can get pulled off and, and it can be super focused, and it can lose tra- it can lose track of time. Um, a, a lot of the um, there's a lot of like stereotypes of the uh, absent minded professor that I think play play some space here. Where right, where blue green is so caught up in something that they they miss in some level uh, they miss the the tree for the forest, if you will. Um, that they're so caught up in the forest that they can't they can't sometimes see the tree. Uh, and, and that, I think, is one of Blue Green's uh, biggest weaknesses. Okay. Um, what else can we say about Blue Green? Um, the thing that is kind of cool uh, about the. So it's interesting. So uh, one of the things I find is that um, players often, the, phil- the, the philosophies that they align with and they connect to, um, don't always match up with the color pairs that they enjoy playing the most. Um, and so it is interesting in that I don't, I don't speak at all blue-green. Like when I think of blue-green is from a philosophical standpoint, I got a lot of blue in me, but I don't have a lot of green in me. Uh, for those that don't know, I, I rank myself uh, red, blue, white, black, green, in, in, from most of these. Um, so blue is my number two, green is my number five. So I, I, I don't really, like I have a lot of friends, you know, like for example, um, Dave Humphreys, uh, who before he became a game designer was a biologist, right? Who like studied nature. Like he really, uh, you know, he really connects to blue green and it really something that speaks to him. Um, it does not speak to me, but interestingly, uh, when I play, like when I play like, um, like Guilds of Ravnica and I get, I get to pick my guild to play with, um, I love playing green, blue. I love the gameplay of green, blue. And I think the interesting thing is, I think in the context of a game, like where it's not like a personal thing, there's something fun about that sort of exploration and understanding. Like, like in the context of a game, I really enjoy it. Like I, I love all of the like um, certain combinations. It's a very Johnny Jenny uh, combination because their desire to explore really. There's a lot of expression that goes on, and there's a lot of neat trying things out and. Um, you know, if you, if you look at how blue and green function, that they they experiment a lot and they try things and they make weird things will be made. And in some level, they do it because they want to understand the bigger picture. Um, but I enjoy this is funny. Like I enjoy the act. <laughs> I enjoy the act of the experiment. So like I really enjoy playing blue green, um, where I don't philosophically connect. Anyway, a, a, a little insight into my personality. Okay, um, what else can I say about blue and green? Um, Okay, so the interesting thing is um, 
I think when we talk, the thing I, I keep mentioning when I talk about these color pairs is it's very easy to sort of go go to the guilds from guilds of Ra- from Ravnica uh, because in a lot of ways it's the low hanging fruit. Like it was the first time we had done any sort of factioning based on two color pairs. So for the most cases, the, the, the one exception was white blue for weird tournament reasons we didn't. But other than the white blue, we we went we went for lowest common denominator in all of them, uh, and so. Blue green, uh, like I said, I think blue green. When I talk about being experimenting, improving by nature, um, improving by nature on some level is a little more cynic than it is blue green, because I think blue green in general. Um, well, I mean, I, I guess if you think of nature in a larger context and less of just biology, uh, that's fine as a blue green thing. Um, I think when in the cynic, we got really into like. Um, the island of Doctor Moreau, sort of things, and and uh, you know they're they're really in sort of the the weird biological uh, uh, experimentation. Um, but the cool thing I think is you could take blue and green and apply it to I- anything. You know, go in the world and find any any aspect of the world, and that blue green would go explore that aspect of the world. Um, like for example, um, take people. Like, I think I could see Blue Green getting very into anthropology, right? Into understanding people. And once again, they, they wouldn't care about the individual person, but they'd be fascinated by people as a whole. Um, and so I think that the, the Blue Green sort of personality, if you will, um, and as I say this, like, I, I see a little of this in me, so um, maybe I'm more green than I let on. Uh, but uh, the, the Blue Green personality essentially is the idea of. Um, there is so much out there that is not understood. Uh, you know, the the key to sort of bettering yourself is going out and understanding what is already there. And that's the fun part where you can see the green and blue come together. Like, blue definitely seeks knowledge, right? But blue... And, and green, like, green wants you to accept the world around you. So it's kind of funny when blue and green get together, it's like, I'm going to study the world. I'm going to study what's there. Um... And in some ways, uh, there's an introspective dive that happens when you go there. I'm like, okay, I want to understand. I mean, pick, pick whatever you want to, you know, whether it's like, – like I said, um, while the, the Simic does biology, you could do anthropology. You, I mean, pick, pick any science or any facet of the world. Blue Green could sort of delve into that and have fun exploring that. That, that, that is the – that is the sort of the core essence of blue green is the idea that there are things around us that I want to understand and I want to go deep. I want to, I want, I want to go deep and understand that thing. And then once I understand that thing, I want to apply that thing to see if I can affect that thing. Um, that, that's a funny thing because I think what happens is green says to blue, okay, you love knowledge and I'm eager to learn about the world around me. Come learn with me. Right. Uh, and then blue looks at green and says, well, you want, you know, you do believe in, in adaptation, right? Well, why don't we just, you know, let's speed that along a little bit. Let, let's, you know, like once we find something, we can, we can affect it and we can, we can sort of see the system. And so that, my friends, is, is kind of the core to blue-green. Um, anyway, uh, that's most of the stuff I want to say for today. Um, I hope, by the way, you guys have enjoyed this series. Um, it's fun. It's funny. I, I do so many different things on the color pie that it's fun to just sort of try different experiments and things. And so this one's been a little more me being me being philosophical and, and talking through stuff. And um, I feel like I learn stuff when I do these. So uh, at least I uh, hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Um, hopefully we're all enjoying it. So, uh, but um, I, as always, I would love to get feedback on any and all I've done. This is the 10th one. Uh, it took me a while to do them because of the pandemic, but I finally finished. So I, I would love to get feedback. And um, I do want to do future color pie stuff. I know I get a lot of people asking about three color. I got to solve that one. That's a little tricky. As you get more and more colors in, it gets a little bit harder to do definitional stuff. But anyway, I'll try to figure that one out. Um, but if anyone has any good ideas for things to do with color pie, I, I would love to do other color pie stuff. So uh, I would love to hear any ideas people have. But anyway, I think that's all I have to say today. And uh, I can see my desk, so I'm almost to work. 
Uh, anyway, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this and my other nine podcasts. And once again, by the way, uh, if you weren't aware, this is number 10. There's there's nine other ones of this series to listen to. And I have numerous other series on uh, I've, I've talked about the colors individually. I did a series of podcasts where I spoke as if I were the colors and I looked at it from the point of view of the color. Uh, I've talked about why they're enemies. I've talked about why they're allies. Anyway, there's lots and lots of stuff out there. So if the color pie is at all fascinating to you, um, and, and by the way, I've also written about it in articles. There's 30 some articles I've written. So um, if this topic is fascinating to you and it's fascinating to me, uh, there's a lot of resources that li- just I alone have done that you can go listen to. And there's other resources that other people have done. Uh, but I probably have done the lion's share of it. So anyway, uh, please go go read that stuff if it sounds interesting. And guys, I will see you all next time. Oh, sorry, sorry. I see that I'm at my desk. So we all know that means, means it's the end of my drive to work. So instead of talking magic, it's time for me to be making magic. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.